hello and um, hope you're all doing well. Um, this session will be looking at section three um, after Leah's monologue that we looked at. Um, I'm going, I'm out of here that monologue. So we have Brian finding Adam in the hedge, the big return, and Adam's monologue and the character's reaction. So I've asked you already, should have read this section and have some ideas about what the characters are up to and what they're doing. So let's just recap about Leah and Phil. Why does Leah admire Phil so much? What ideas do you think of? So we talked about his control, his lack of emotion, the charisma, the power he has over other people. What else is there? What else do you think? So his, for Leah, his control and his single-mindedness, where he's able to shut and block things out, is something to admire, because she's constantly in a state of worrying about other people, worrying about family, friends, the country, the world, all of that. So Phil's really important in this section as well. Everyone's still in awe of Phil, in fear of Phil. So two things to really focus on is Kathy in this section. So she's such an interesting character. What ideas have you got about her already? And then um, obviously Adam and the idea of bullying in this part. So let's look at Adam's monologue. Asks on page 52 what happened. Just before we've got the what are we going to do section, Kathy, Leah, Phil, Phil, everyone's looking at Phil. Add Leah, what happened? Adam doesn't answer. Leah goes to him, what happened? And then Adam says, I, I was in a dark, and then the beat, walking, crawling in this dark, and you're moving, but with you, hands and knees, crawl, crawling in this dark place. I don't remember things I fell, I fall into, I fell onto this, wake, woke, wake up. I woke up with liquid on my head, leaves dead and rotting. I remember leaves, but just dark. Maybe a light high, 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 high above. And I drank the liquid. It was blood. There was, it was mine. So I, it's not wrong because it was my crawling for a long time. I thought that that was hard to tell. Tunnels scared. I was felt like the dark was my fear. Do you know what I mean? I was wrapped in it like a soft blanket. And then I came out. I saw this light, this daylight light. I saw this light and went that way towards. And I thought I died because that's what people go to the light. You And there was such a pain in my, I thought 
the light would make it go, but it didn't because the light was I was confused. Outside, I was sad, crushed. Came outside, I couldn't remember things. I couldn't remember anything. I was new, a new, a new, a new me, and I felt happy. It hurt to laugh, but I laughed. Eat. Then night came, and then I was panicked because again dark. I panicked again. I ran. There was lots of scratching on my skin and I found my place where I live and that's where I live now, I live there. You know my name so you can shut, you can, I live there, it's mine, I live there, Adam, I'm not coming back, Beat. it's Adam. So his language there is interesting isn't it, like his grammar and like he's trying to recall words. So he says, I fooled into. Then he, re I fell, I fooled into. I think he spoke grammatically incorrectly before the uh, incident. But above that, where it says, walking, crawling in this dark. Never in this dark. When you're moving but with you hands and knees with your hands and knees crawl crawling so it's like he's remembering how to speak properly and we get he talks about touching his wound and there being blood and then him drinking his own blood been a lot of blood um, yeah, so the imagery, the symbolism there of drinking blood and being resurrected. There's a bit of a Jesus thing going on here, if you want to go down that route. Um, so, got these stage directions here as well. So before... Oh, he speaks. They stand around the boy who looks like a tramp. His clothes are torn and dirty and his hair is matted with dried blood from an old gash on his forehead. that has not been cleaned up. He stands there, twitchily staring at them as though they were aliens and it looks as though he might run off at any moment. So this section, hello Adam, all right, pause. So that section has been in a past exam. So uh, the the interplay between Phil and Adam. So how how does Phil say hello, Adam? And how does Adam respond? So is he very cold? Is he very friendly? Why would he be that way? So what would be his motivation in this scene? So stage directions helping us understand the character. So the dried blood matted gashes on his forehead. Stands there twitchly. So twitching. So it's like this sort of an animal, like a scared animal. He's like, obviously he's a brain damaged teenager, isn't he? He's been eating dead, well, eating bugs and dead animals. And the way he's looking at the others as if they're aliens. So he's not he's not sure where he is. But in this monologue, what he says about this light so it's about heaven, he was there, and then he's happy, he's in there's a new him and he's not coming back. Which is a powerful statement which Phil takes on really dark, sinister. Comments he makes on page 56. Do you want to come back or do you want to stay? Are you happy here? 
and then Leah can read Phil's mind. What you're thinking there by staying here. He's not going back to his family. They all think he's dead. And then we have on page 57 Bill and Kathy uh, dark understanding, page 59, page 58, Phil to Kathy, do you understand? And Leah's like, understand what? And she goes, yes, I do. So... Phil is in a place where he's actually willing to kill. So we have, they're so deep in their lie, and the framing with the DNA evidence. And they've already had the funeral. They're so deep into it. They can't admit they can't bring Adam back. So it's not like a triumphant return, a triumphant resurrection and everything's going to be okay. Well, in the audience's mind, it could be that way, couldn't it? How could they could come up with some plan to say actually everything was all right? But no, it's easier, it's simpler. To let him stay in the forest. So, in that section, 49-52, Brian's really someone to think about, Brian's character. It's really dark and really unpleasant, this scene, this section. Um, If you look on page 47, so Leah talks about how everyone has been reacting. Kathy uh, on every TV channel, celebrity, loving it. Uh, Rich's name is his dog, Adam. Mark's mum says a baby boy is going to call him Adam. Behaving better. Jan helping other children at school. Mark doing charity work. Brian is on medication. And so Brian sort of manic, giggly, it's like this high, but um, sort of uncontrolled, unpleasant, jittery character. So you think about him at the beginning, when we, the first time we meet him, he's crying. Unstable he is there, and now some of the things he says, like, I called, I love calling, I love calling Leah, and then I feel like the trees are watching me, so this sort of run there's an unpleasantness, and then on page 51, should we hold hands? Come on, let's hold, let's hold, let's hold hands, come on, come on, let's, he's like all hyperactive like a child, and then Kathy slaps. Violence. So this is Brian. He's just, you know, he's got this, could be laughing at him one minute and then, like, but with sort of a grimace because how disturbing he is as a character and all that building up to. Like, he's giggling, but also he's sort of the way he found Adam and he's sort of going to go with Kathy. And Adam, he's going to lure Adam away, like unwittingly. And sometimes I think, are they also, is it just Adam that they're going to put the plastic bag over his head? 
properly. So, um, well, Kathy does threaten it, page 56. If you don't shut up, you'll be dead. So, let's think about Brian and his function. Comedy, but it's a dark, bitter, disturbed comedy. It did give some pace. It's not all just like intense. You've got this sort of a grotesque comedy is there as well. And the dawning realizations of what Phil is planning. If you read it, when what clues do you have about Phil thinking we need to kill him again? We need to kill him actually this time. When do you think Leah understands it? And then what about Jan and Mark and Blue and Richard? Are they watching? Um, and remember, Danny's missing now. So Danny's not in that section three. So that's a character to be thinking about. This one with prospects, clever enough, got drive. He's not there. So why is that? It's like John Tate's disappeared now, Danny. And then Leah's about to go. So, should have notes on, on this section. Um, so, how do each of the characters react to the appearance of Adam? And then we just talked about you know, the information Leah gave us on page 47. So, who has taken charge? How do you know? Put some notes down. Why does everyone still turn to film? What do you think? So these young people, youth, are they just sheep? They're enjoying the violence. They're scared to tell the truth. What is it like thematically? What do you think? Why is everyone still turning to Phil? And then, oh, double R. Um, create so like a rehearsal schedule um rehearsal schedule rehearsal strategy so being a bit creative think about this idea uh, uh newspaper article describing the arrest of the local man for the abduction of adam so an unnamed 43-year-old local man has been arrested on suspicion of murdering a missing 16-year-old missing boy, Adam Brain. Police have confirmed the man's DNA was found on the missing youngster's jumper, although the suspect claims he is a victim of a setup. So if you were finishing that off, what would you what would you include? So you don't have to write it. What you include? Just Think about the information. What could you put in there that would show your knowledge of the actual truth? And then let's think about up to page 56. So, notes go to the light. What does this tell us about Adam? And then, does Leah's reaction to Prodigy? And what do you suppose Phil's reaction means? death so make you know, the uh, do you want to come back do you think if Adam had said yeah I want to see my mum do you think Phil would uh, let him come back in Phil's head is it euthanasia is he happy here everyone's best this way Adam was never happy in their society he was bullied, he was a victim, and now he's happy in the forest, and that's where he's going to stay. It's a perverse kindness. Because in a way it's true, isn't it? And that's what the writer, that's what Dan Kelly has got to try and get us to think about, isn't it? So what about Leah? Should she be stronger? She, when does she know? She, when does she know? So 
So, uh, rehearsal strategy, another one. So, monologue diary. So, Leah, Phil, or Kathy. So, diary entry. So, it would be a monologue. So, for example, we have to kill him. There's simply no other way around it. I'm sure I can get Kathy to do it. She seems to love the violence. And I know she got a kick out of scratching Adam in the eyes, the nutter. Besides, he's basically dead already. It's a very, very brutal feel, isn't it? So, be something in the exam you'd be asked to do a rehearsal strategy. That's something that could be possible. It's like an extended thought practice, extended response to the hot seat question. So if you think of going up to page sixty. 960 with the uh, plastic bag. So the audience see how they're going to kill Adam. It's a clever, clever way the writers got that violence in there without us actually having to see the death on the stage. And then Leah at the end. Phil, Phil, please. Please, Phil, but Phil just walks away. Really, really profound ending with Kathy, Brian, and Adam, Phil, and Leah. So make sure you've got that section clear in your head. So, hot seating for this part. So, Brian takes Adam off, they stare at Phil on page 57. So Adam's off happy in his burrow, in his den that he's made. What questions have you got for the characters? What would you ask Brian? Is it worth asking Brian anything? Does he understand what's going on? So Leah's desperation in this all the way through how would you show her interacting with the other characters? So I'd focus, think about up to page 57 until Adam has gone away back to his den. And then we'll think about the uh, plastic bag, the carrier bag bit again. So that's yeah, let's just worry don't worry about page fifty nine sixty too much at the moment. Just think about the build up to that horrible climax where you see how Adam would be dying with Brian as the guinea pig. Um Brian's now the one being bullied like Adam used to be, isn't he? So let's make sure we've got our notes and understanding of the characters in the building up to that moment. So our focus, remember, was Kathy and Adam and the idea of bullying. And we talked about just now Brian taking Adam's place and Phil to his role and how Kathy's stepping in to do what she's told because she's enjoying it because she's scared. What interpretation would you give? Make sure you've got some notes on that.
Actually, nearly at the end, so like I said, it's just a horrible plastic bag over the head. I'm sure you've all read already. And then dark, sad ending, Denmark, and then so um keep sending me your work and your notes and i hope you're enjoying or have enjoyed the play so um have a good weekend and thank you <laughs>